So I think we have to look at the manuscript again. Um, let's see what this is. I found Plantow's briefcase in the killer's hotel room. It was empty, of course. Oh, all information you didn't need to tell her. Let's take another look at the manuscript. Let's face it, we need help, George. Someone who knows about these things. Who do you suggest? Indiana Jones? <laughs> I know a guy who specializes oh, no. in medieval studies. Not that guy. His name is Lobino. Huh. Some stuffy old fossil who gets horny over ancient relics, I suppose. <laughs> Far from it. Andre isn't the stereotypical professor you have in mind. Where can I find this Lobino guy? At the Crone Museum. I'll give you the address. Ah, uh, Lobino. This guy is a massive tool. If I remember correctly, he's obsessed. Well, he fancies Nico. He sees George as competition. Yeah. Guy's an asshole. So yeah, let's, uh, let's examine. There's a woman looking at her reflection in a mirror. Bottom but right. The reflection has three hideous faces. She reminds me of the Wicked Queen in Snow White. She was the one who said mirror, mirror on the wall, wasn't she? She made me cry so much when I was a kid. Mom carried me out of the movie theater. <laughs> she didn't frighten me in the least. Yeah. Like Fucking I said, George, I was only man a up. Kid. I didn't like the crocodile in Peter Pan either. Ah, uh, George. A knight with a crystal ball. Now, there's something written on the scroll beside the knight. Yes, but it's written in Latin. Per disciplinum mea lux videbis. By my teachings, you will see the light. You speak Latin? Where did you learn a trick like that? A trick? I studied law, okay? I can read Latin. Ma, you're touchy. Tell me that again. Through my teachings, you will be enlightened. So I did look. Um, I took a break and I looked and apparently they removed all the death scenes in this game. <laughs> and all the blood. Well... Specific parts of the game has blood in it. Nothing. We're not. We're not talking like gore. But yeah, <laughs> I don't know why they decided to. But they, why they, they removed such stupid things from a game that is like nineteen ninety six. It's so odd. What? It's it's it feels unnecessary. You know, especially when you see games nowadays. Yeah, you, know, you think definite bloody game like this is going to be scary towards kids. I mean, it's not really hinted towards kids, this game, is it? It's, uh, it's for the, uh, again, I was a child when I played this, so yeah. Go fish, eh? Yeah, um, I also looked in, apparently, there's only one lady who voiced Nika that was actually French. So yeah, I think she was in Broken Sword 3? Or 4, one or the other, I can't remember. Anyway, I don't know what I'm talking about. There's I'm babbling. Working on a loom. Babbling. Weaving a carpet or a tapestry. Or a duvet cover. It's a clue to a place, I reckon. Somewhere famed for weaving and ships. Where folk live in barrels? It beats copper boxes. Does it, though? Depends what's been in the barrel. There's a guy with a sword and a bull. The only mythological bull I know of is the Minotaur, but he was only half bull. I don't think I'd like to be half a bull, even if it was the bottom half. What's that object between them? It looks like a gem on top of a tripod. So, if you're not guessed already, these are all clues to places that we need to go to or know. Um, this gem on a tripod plays a big part in the story. I remember that. I don't remember what the woman with the mirror, the guy with the loom, or the dude with the crystal ball in his hand. Uh, yeah, so, so much of this game... I kind of forgot. I remember it when I'm in it, but I don't remember it when I'm not in it, if that makes sense. As I said, got poo brain. So, we need to leave now, anyway. Let's go and find the lob and all. Maybe I'll check out the Croon Museum. I'm sure you'll find it useful, George. Oh, bloody hell, this Croon Museum. Oh. That's a nostalgic buzz as well. You can die in there as well by, uh, by coincidence. Of course, George can't. Yeah, that double click to exit thing. It's so weird that I can't do it. I'm very impatient, as you probably noticed. You can't, you can't go back to 
Back to the Hotel Ubu, excuse me. And here we are. Ah, oh, this, this, this right here. This is proper nostalgic bus for me. I remember getting stuck in this museum for ages. my fist through the pain, wrenching <laughs> open the window and vaulting triumphantly into the building. Then I thought, no, that's dumb. Besides, I might get hurt. If this is in, if this was Indiana Jones, he would have just dived through that window, wouldn't he? Because you know, Indy is a boss. That's right, George. Take your time. It's not like we're all waiting. There we go. The first thing that jumps out of here is this tripod. Why is that guy so close to me? It's proper looking at me. What the hell is he doing? Pardon me. Oui, monsieur. Are you Labino? Oh, no. Fancy you mistaking me for him. No. I am the deputy custodian. But Labino does work here. Work? I would then go so far as to call it the... He studied here, most days, but as you can see for yourself, not today. Of course it's not here today. That's when we bloody need him. Do you know anything about medieval manuscripts? Not me, monsieur. I am no scholar. Though people often mistake me for one. It is the uniform, I guess. They see the clothes. They are impressed. And they ask you to park their cars? They ask me to park the... No, no, no. They assume I am an authority on the exhibit in my care. Whereas you know next to nothing about history. Of course not. All I am saying is, I am no scholar. Not like Monsieur Lobino. Do you know anything about the Knights of the Temple? No, sir. Not a sausage. Take his hand. Would you like to shake my hand? <laughs> not while I'm on duty, monsieur. What? Well, what's being on duty got to do with Evan? Unless that's a weird euphemism that he's in France, um, in, in, um, in Paris, should I say. What do you make in of France? this tissue? It is absolutely disgusting, monsieur. <laughs> I never get tired of people's remarks about dirty, soggy tissue. What the hell is he keeping it in his pocket for? Do you recognize the man in this photograph? No, monsieur. Is there any reason why I should? I guess not. Thanks for your help. Pretty sure you come back to this museum in Broken Sword 2. Or do you? Oh, bloody hell, I can't remember now. Let's have a look in these display cases. I tried to sneak my hand inside while the guard wasn't looking, but the case was locked. Why would you sneak your hand inside? We're not here to steal, dude. I tried to sneak my hand inside. Oh, he's gonna say it for everything. I looked down at a collection of tools with wooden handles and tarnished metal blades. There were knives, chisels, and spikes fanned out in a semicircle. I guess there's always been a need for home improvement. What's this one say then? The case contained oh. two rows of silver coins. Each coin on the lower row showed a portrait of a guy with a huge nose. Definitely Roman. The case contained some fragments of pottery. They looked to me like broken flower pots. Above them, a sign read, L'Age Paleolithique. The case contained a collection of rocks. They were all shapes and colors, but they were still rocks. Above them, a sign read, L'Age Paleolithique. Okay. It was a tapestry of a lady, a lion, and a unicorn. If I'd had more time, I could have stared at it all day. That's weird. I do, I do, I do, I do remember that they removed some, um, some of George, George's random dialogue that he has when you examine stuff. They, they did remove a lot of weird things in um um in the director's cut. It's not really a director's cut. It's more like the director cut content version. I don't know why. Pretty sure you need to touch this. The rod turned smoothly, and the window above me opened. Yeah, that that guy really doesn't like that. Look at him. So this so this tripod looks familiar, doesn't it? In the case was a spindly tripod. Blackened with age and pitted with rust. It was identical to the tripod pictured on the manuscript. A notice identified it as 15th century from Western Ireland. It had been found in Loch Marne at the site of a Knights Templar preceptory. Ireland! Was it? 
This tripod was found in Ireland. I will have to ask you to keep your voice down. I'm sorry, I was excited. I thought Lockman was in a uh, prison broken sword too. Oh, it can't be. Seamus the Pixie. That's why I was thinking Leprechaun, because he goes to Ireland. Why would it be a, why would Ireland be represented by Pixies? I always assumed that like a leprechaun was like typical. Like why why a pixie? Huh. The totem pole looked distinctly out of place in the setting of the museum. Can I touch it? Whoa. <laughs> Leave it alone. That closet is over 3,000 years old. Closet? It's a sarcophagus. So, you have to hide in this sarcophagus because you need this tripod. I don't know if you need it now, but I remember that you have to hide in there. So, I, th I think what you needed to do is... Let's wait for that guy to move. You need to, like, open this so he pisses off over here. And when it's taking its time to do this, you can hide in this a couple because I don't know if it's now or later. Let's try it now. You guys. Oh, you did a weird noise. <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely not now. <laughs> this is it now. Man, he would this shit his ridiculous. pants, wouldn't he? I could be here for hours. That guy would shit his pants if he just came out of that. Okay, so we I know we need to come back here. I know we do. It must be later. And I know you have to hide in there. The tripod was dead. Oh, the one on the manuscript. The Templar connection confirmed it. I was tempted to go to Ireland to check it out. Mm. And it's in Paris, isn't it? So it's not exactly too far away. Uh, shall we go back to Nico? Nah. So we got Russia. I think we only ever go to... um. Go to Morocco. I think. Get to Morocco. I'm I'm not good with my uh with my flags. Because we got England, Spanish, um French, Italian, German, Russian. I don't know any else. I'm, I'm too I'm too stupid. This is obviously Ireland. Bloody hell, lock them on. Several hours later, I arrived in Ireland, the Emerald Isle. I'd been lucky to get a bus from Dublin to the tiny village of Loch Marne. On the way out, the driver told me there was only one service a day. That is some shitty bus service. One a day. I remember getting stuck in this part for, for days. Days and days. The menu was limited. It read, no food today. I didn't care. I'd lost my appetite somewhere over the Irish Sea. Who's whistling? It was a featureless plastic box firmly attached to the wall of the building. I tugged at the plastic cover, but it didn't move. Okay, there's... We can go inside, make if if it's I can't remember. I didn't. What what was this? What was what, what's the bar called? McDivitts. Mc McDivitts. Go in there. It says food. Yeah, there's no food on the menu. The lad was doing his best to express his adolescent aggression. <laughs> his effort was somewhat diminished by the fringe of milk on his lightly feathered upper lip. <laughs> wow. Hi there. What? 
What's your name, kid? Who are you calling, kid? Who the hell are you? I'm George Stobart, and I'm with the good guys. You're a head case, mister. A few sandwiches short of the picnic. Cut the crap and tell me your name. Liam McGuire. What are you doing hanging around the bar, McGuire? I'm on the run from me dad. Why? Did you do something bad? I ain't done nothing, boss. You can tell me, kid. Is it your dad? Oh, sir. He drinks every last penny down his evil throat. And there's me poor old mother, bedridden and dying of presumption. I tried to buy her medicine. Chopped firewood for father Mahoney till me fingers bled. The old skin flint cheated me too. But I took the pennies he gave me back home. Look, ma, says I. See what your darling son has earned with his own sweat and blood. When suddenly... Me dad appears and grabs the loot. I'm up to Dublin heavy drinking, says he. Watch out till I get back. That's why I runned away. Something in the grin on his face told me he wasn't being strictly truthful. Compared to him, Huckleberry Finn was a candidate for altar boy of the year. <laughs> Take his hand. Give me your hand. Get lost. <laughs> oh, come on. I just want to show you a little trick. No way, mister. I don't do tricks. Father Mahoney told me I'd burn in hell if I did. I just want to shake your hand, that's all. Oh, all right. <laughs> gotcha. Tee -hee. Huh? Didn't feel a thing. Brilliant. <laughs> what does this tissue mean to you? Nothing. Do you recognize this matchbook, Maguire? No, sir. I never seen it before in my life. Mm. Have you ever seen this man before? What a slimy character. No, I never seen him. Never seen him. What can you tell me about the castle, Maguire? What do you want to know? Well, can I get inside? No, it's locked up. Does anyone live there? No, only... What? Oh, nothing. You know something about the castle you're not telling me, don't you? No. What is it you're covering up? Is it something you're scared of? I ain't scared of nothing. I'll give you one last chance to tell me about the castle. Oh, yeah? And what if I don't? Then I'm taking you back to school. Oh. There's a ghost. <laughs> it's called the Phantom of Loch Man. Is that bullshit if you ask me? You're not telling me you believe in ghosts, are you? Mister, I seen it with me very own eyes. Last Tuesday night, I went up to see what that dig was about. I just reached the top of the wall when I hears this awful noise. What sort of noise? A horrible snuffling and snorting, like O'Brien's pig, only worst. It was coming from inside the castle. Did you find out what was making the noise in the castle? No fear. I just sat there on the wall like Humpty Dumpty. The moon was cracked and greasy like an old dinner plate. The yard was full of shadows that could have been hiding anything. I would have gone home, but me legs had lost their stuffing. Did you get to see the ghost? Indeed I did. And a fearsome sight it is too. I sat on me ass, waited while the moon went down. Then out it comes from the shadows, all grey and tattered and hunched over like an old bent willow. Then I hears the spluttering and splashing and horrible laughter in the dark. I was so scared. Why, I fell off the bloody wall. He didn't know so. I'm sure there's a rational explanation for what you saw at the castle. There is. The bloody place is haunted. Have you seen a guy dressed as a clown? Here in Loch Marne, they all dress like <laughs> clowns. The man I'm looking for is a dangerous psychotic. Savage. Jesus. It's just like that film I saw. There's this clown scene, and he's after this kid who saw him kill a guy. 
who tries to warn the sheriff, only no one believes him. Then, while he's in the tub, the clown cuts him up with a chainsaw. My God, that doesn't sound suitable for a kid like you. Who are you calling a kid? I'm 25. Yeah, right. You're not a day over 14. Oh no, it's 25 that I am. Married with a car and three kids. Ten kids if you count the wives. <laughs> Savage. See you later, kid. Okay, mister. <laughs> Lying little shit. Let's head up to the castle. Can't do nothing in the castle though, so well have well, well a look. What the? Hi, do you speak English? Well, no. Uh, what if I was to say no? <laughs> An implication of cognizance shrouded in denial. A pretty poser of a paradox indeed. I gave him the look I'd perfected when I was 12 and was going to be the greatest hypnotist of all time. It was a killer. Are you attempting to hypnotize me or is it the constipation you're suffering? <laughs> I was a little out of practice. <laughs> How did I know that? <laughs> How did I know I was trying to hypnotize him? Would you like to shake my hand? What is this? I don't do that male bond and stuff. Why? What do you make of this tissue? That's a sorry sight to wave about in public. Oh, it's theatrical grease paint. And that makes it all right, does it? I must remember that next time someone complains about the state of me handkerchief. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? No, but I wouldn't trust him. His eyes are too close together. He's not a friend of yours, is he? Oh, no. Far from it. In fact, I believe it's the face of a killer. I knew it! Piggy eyes. Can't trust them. <laughs> Piggy eyes. <laughs> Piggy eyes. Good book? A book? It's a passport to a world of fantasy and imagination. Yeah? What's the title? Creative Shelving for Beginners. The 1978 edition. Wow. What's so cool about home improvement? There's nothing like it. The resinous autumnal aroma of seasoned wood. The rhythmic rasp of the plague. Ah, no wonder our Lord came to earth as the son of a humble carpenter. I bet he was a wizard with a chisel and a length or two before. Surely the betrayal of Christ's adoptive family as humble artisans is a symbolic metaphor. I don't know about that, but I know they were carpenters. Haven't you read the book? Well, no. But I have seen the greatest story ever told, and I don't recall Jesus putting up any shelves. <laughs> it's somehow like the audio is so random, like that. It sounds normal there, but when you like talk to him, this. What do you make of this tissue? That's a sorry sight to wave about in public. It, it wasn't that one. What? Do you recognize the man in this yeah. photograph? Oh, you already. That's really you echoey. Didn't. It's really echoey that when you're asking this, it's weird. It's like they recorded it on, like, they recorded a dialogue in so many different places. I'm pretty sure in the director's cut, the audio sounds a bit cleaner, but. What can you tell me about the castle? Not much, I'm sorry to say. Most of its history is long forgotten. Ah, but if these old stones could only speak, what stories they'd tell. Stories to make your toes curl and your blood run cold. You know. This castle is said to be over 600 years old. Convenient. We need to go in there. Who built the castle? Mad Phelan, the first lord of Loch Marne. Well, I say lord, but actually he was little more than a village chieftain. He built his castle from the remains of the Templar Preceptory. Do you mind if I climb up your haystack to get into the castle? What? You'd break your stupid neck for sure. Do you think I'd stand by and see your brains dashed out? I'd be very careful, and I promise not to sue. You won't get the chance, not while I'm here to stop you. Oh, it's nice of him. Where was the site of the Templar Preceptory? Right here, on Temple Hill. Feeling built right on top of the old wall. It's said that deep beneath these walls, there's a Templar chapel. Did Pegram discover the chapel? I don't know. His workers were sworn to secrecy. I have to go now. Okay, so he mentioned some dude called Pegram. 
I don't know who that is just yet. So, can't go in the castle, but we can have a look. <laughs> Pushing with all my strength got me nowhere. They didn't budge. I really need to start working out. I don't think even if you work, start working out, George, you push that open. So our objective is to go in the castle. We need to go up the taste stack. Unfortunately, this chat won't let us go up. So we'll head into the pub, shall we? This area is quite small, and um, but it's it's small, but it's quite confusing sometimes. And doing certain things to trigger certain events. Luckily, I basically know the game out of the back of my hand. So I say that. That's an odd thing to say, isn't it? How well do you know the back of your hand? So this chap is not suspicious, is he? Look at him. Sneezy boy over there. Dude playing a bloody violin. Let's talk to the violin guy. He wasn't listening. Oh, screw him then. Hello there. Uh, my name's George Stovart. Pleased to meet you, I'm sure. No. I'm O'Brien. Uh, can I help you? Let's ask him questions. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? Nope. I've never seen him before. No. Does this matchbook mean anything to you? The design is Middle Eastern, I'd say. Oh, smart boy. I'd like to shake you by the hand, no. Mr. O'Brien. I'd rather yeah. not. You see, I happen to notice that vibrating buzzer in your palm. <laughs> Someday. Someday I'll get somebody else. What do you make of this tissue? Well, I guess that muck on it is grease paint. There's no fooling you, Mr. O'Brien. Smart man. What can you tell me about the castle, Mr. O'Brien? It's a fine sight now, isn't it? Dates back to the 10th century, you know. Most of the existing building was added much later, of course. Are the ruins open to the public? Oh no, it's much too dangerous. Anyway, there's nothing of interest remaining. Can you tell me about the tripod which was found in the castle? Oh, well, there's a bone of contention and controversy. It was dug up by an Englishman of the archaeological persuasion. Who was this Englishman? Professor Pegram. The same man who dug up the gem. The gem? We saw a gem on top of the tripod on the manuscript. No. Uh, the, the tripod and the gem were together. So where's the gem at the moment? How can I get into the castle? No. Well, those wards were built specifically yeah. to stop people getting in, Mr. Stobart. But I dare say you'll find a way, if you've the will. Do you know where I can find Pegram? You're too late to meet that fella. Is he dead? No. Not that. Yeah. But he's gone from the village. A saw point with our esteemed host. I might add. No. Why is Pegram's departure upset the landlord? He's lost a paying guest. That's why. More than that, there's the question of an unsettled no. bill. Poor Michael's seen red over the business, and I don't blame him. What? He didn't pay? No. Wow, Pegram's a bastard. Can you tell me more about the landlord? Mick Leary? He's what you call a, a would-be sophisticate. The trouble is, his idea of sophistication extends as far as putting paper in the lavatory. <laughs> well, I never worked out why he did that. Yeah. It's much too dark in there to read. That's true. Have you ever run your hand over the back of the door? The graffiti is written in Braille. No. <laughs> Got some brilliant conversations in this game. Do you know where Pegram has gone? I'm sorry, but I don't. No. He opened anchor in the dark and shipped out before the dawn. And why did he do that? Who knows? A guilty conscience or a secret assignation. No. Whatever the reason, yeah. he'll not be missed in Lachmar. Maybe now the fuss about the gem has died down. We can get back no. to normal. Yeah. What can you tell me about the gem which Pegram found? Now there's a gem which should never have been taken. A man would have to be full of greed to covet that stone. What's your interest in the jewel? You're not a reporter, are you? No. Oh no. Thank the Lord for that. <laughs> Thank the Lord. How's that? Do you recognize the man in this photograph? Nope. I've never seen him before. Pretty sure I answered my question already. Goodbye for now. Speak to the guy next to him. Hi, my name's Stobart. George Stobart. 
Hello there, mister. What can I do for you? Careful! Do you recognize the man in this photograph? It's a handsome mug on that fella, to be sure. Is he a film star? Don't be fooled. This is the face of a psychopathic killer. No. Well, there's one in the eye for me and my men. No. Do you recognize this matchbook? Careful! No. May I shake your hand? No, you can't. Well, how come? Because I'll spill no. me beer if you do. <laughs> That's the best excuse. Does this tissue mean anything to you? No, but you should show that to my granny. She could tell you fortune from it. From a soiled no. tissue? Yeah, sure. Some people read tea leaves. My granny reads handkerchiefs. That's disturbing and disgusting at the same time. Let's give a clown nose. What does this false nose mean to you? Ah, uh, no, you're a clown. No, not me. Ha <laughs> ha, you're a good one, aren't you? Did you hear that, Michael? I hate clowns. <laughs> Listen to this fella. I hate clowns, says he. Isn't he just the funniest man you ever did see, Michael? <gasps> He's not a clown, Doyle. He's not even remotely funny. Thanks. <laughs> I think. Can you tell me anything about the castle on the hill? <gasps> oh, I don't know much about anything. You should ask Mr. O'Brien here. He does joined up writing. <gasps> Would you be one of them history fellows yourself? Uh, yeah. That's right. Professor Stobart, Miskatonic <gasps> University. You're an archaeologist, and you're asking us about the castle. Excuse me, Mr. O'Brien. The gentleman was talking to me. <laughs> How come you didn't leave with the others? I didn't know they'd gone. Oh, yes. Packed their spades and shovels, and away they went. Seems I missed all the excitement. What excitement? Professor Pegram's discovery. <gasps> Haven't you heard? <laughs> No. How is how is he not heard? <laughs> Brilliant. Do you know anything about Pegram's excavation? Only that he didn't have the right tools for the job. What he needed was shovels and a JCB. Pegram was digging for historical remains, not coal. Is that a fact? What the hell for? Is the science of archaeology part. Understanding how people used to live by what they've left behind. One day archaeologists might be digging up our remains. Imagine that, Mr. O'Brien. I wonder what they'll find. Well, it won't be arrowheads and beakers. Fast food cartons and flavoured condoms, more likely. <laughs> Brilliant. Did anyone from the village work at Pegram's dig? I tried it myself, but that high and mighty history man called me incontinent. What a nerve. Hadn't I dug more holes than the rest of them put together? Is it true that Pegram found a valuable gem? What? <gasps> First I heard of it. <laughs> Where have you been, Pat? For that gem is the talk <gasps> of every town from Loch Marn <gasps> to Ballydoon. Nobody told me. A lucky sod. So that's why he scampered. He <laughs> found the gem and ran away. <gasps> Is it now that everyone wants it from him? <laughs> Son of a bitch. Bye for now. We'll talk to the barman. This guy here is the guy we need to talk to. Obviously, he kind of, it's kind of, it kind of obvious sometimes that the people you need to talk to.